Hi everyone, this is Mr. Lim from SEP Academy and we are very honored to have with us three brilliant young tutors from Zenith Studios. So, make an introduction for yourself. Hi, my name is Evan. I am actually the Managing Director of Zenith Education Studio and I also teach Economics. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm basically the Head of Physics at Zenith Education Studio. Hey, I'm Ming Liang and I'm heading the Math Program at Zenith Education Studios. Nice to meet you all. The amount of passion in this room is really crazy. They are very, very passionate teachers and what I can tell you is from our informal sharing, they dedicated a lot, a lot of hours just to see students and help students to achieve their goals and we all want the best for students to help you all to get the, the best grades you have for your university applications. So for our viewers who are viewing this from, and most likely you are trying to understand a little bit better about your subject combinations. So we have some questions that were streamed in, so we just want to ask our panel of experts here. So number one is, what's the merit of taking 4H2 subjects as contrast to like 3H2 and 1H1? So, who would like to take questions? <laughs> as the scholar. As the scholar? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so maybe personally for me, right, because I came from Raffles, like, okay, for our site, actually, it's quite typical for the students to all take 4 h 2 like, Maybe the idea is because if you are capable enough, right, okay, they will like to stretch your potential, like, okay, so exploring 4 h 2 right, actually lets you uh, do more uh, subjects in greater depth, okay, mm -hmm. and so when you go to universities, you have actually more choices, like, that's one aspect of it, okay, second aspect is actually more of the grading system for the cap itself, okay, so when you have 4 h 2 right, okay, so what we do for A level is that they will take three H twos, okay, your best three three H twos, and then for the last one, right, which is hopefully it's not that bad, okay, but they will actually demote it to a H one now, okay. So in that case, taking four H twos, right, okay, it does give you a slight advantage, okay, over three H one and one H two, okay. But that being granted, you also must know that uh, taking four H two means you need to put in more effort also as well, okay, because mm -hmm. technically most H two subjects require more effort to actually score well compared to H ones. Yeah. So for more details about the breakdown of the differences between H1 and H2, remember to watch our videos, like and subscribe. But anyway, having said that, so we're <laughs> going to discuss a little bit more about subject choosing. So we understand that for subjects in our new syllabus, we need to have one which is contrasting. So mm. Emma, can you share a little bit more about what is this contrasting subject that we have? So basically, um, you're not allowed to only take science subjects or only art subjects. If I could, I would only take art subjects, but you always must make sure that you take a contrasting. So um, very, I, I would say that the two most popular combinations would be physics, chemistry, math, econs, or bio, chem, math, and econs. So the econs is actually the contrasting subject because economics is actually an arts um, subject rather than a science. So right. every single school actually requires you to have have this contrasting subject. So some of the most common uh, subjects would be economics. Um, a lot of people take literature. Um, some people like to take geography, but I would say um, generally those few um, subjects are the contrasting that most people take. So yeah. one contrasting can be like humans, and then you take like sciences and math in contrast mm -hmm. with that, is that? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just to understand, it's like causes like uh, literature, like popular, for like among students hmm. at a H2 level? I would say actually varies between school and varies between school very, very, mm, yeah, yes, like yeah. for example I was from ACJC I think a lot of students actually took literature mm -hmm. yeah but from what I know other schools like there, there will still be um, a lot of people who are interested in taking it but it isn't nearly as popular as compared to science subjects mm, I, see, yeah. I see so how about understand um, now you may have other interests for example like AP, MEP so some of the uh, viewers they have MEP program and they wanted to understand a little bit about the involvement uh, in terms of commitment and amount of effort that they have to put in <laughs> when they sit for the A-level. So does anyone have any experience for taking a contrasting subject such as AP or MEP? For me, I actually took a program called Drama Elective Program. Oh. So uh, my co subject combination was actually Geography, Econs, Drama and um, Math. So um, I always like to start off uh, like my introduction with a fun fact and I always like to say that for my A-levels itself, I did Muay Thai and dance. So <laughs> I, uh, for my A-levels itself, 60% was performative. So like my final paper at the end of the year, the written paper was only 40%, whereas about roughly, if I'm not wrong about, I can't remember the exact breakdown, but close to 50% was just pure performance. One was an individual performance where I did Muay Thai and dance. Then another one was a group component where we did a 30 minute play. And then finally, we had to actually do a um, thesis paper on our individual performance. I always like to tell people it's basically like a H3 paper, mm. just that it's not a H3 by itself. Uh. But um, I would say the amount of time that we had to spend doing the paper, you can actually treat it as if it was a H3. Uh. But 
the yeah. AP and MEP program can be pretty time consuming. It is. Yeah. So we we did mention the well, it's pretty similar to H three. So for our viewers, uh, so Shao Mingliang probably can tell our viewers like, uh, what is H three as compared to H two? Like, is it compulsory to do so? And uh, what advantage does it have for students who take H three? Probably like H two uh, H three math and H three physics. Right. So I start off with Sean first. Okay, so basically for H three, it really just is more in-depth and extracurricular so like I said just now uh, what basically H3 students have to do is basically kind of like get attached to an outside entity maybe a university or something where they have to undergo projects with um, undergrads and really understand more about um, basically the subject that they're studying seems like it's a bit similar to the AP yeah, program yeah, very, very similar, very similar. <laughs> it's very very time consuming as well so even though um, I didn't take a H3 subject but in Hua Chong, it's actually pretty common for most people to actually do a H3. Mm. For example, I had a friend who did H3 chemistry, and what happened was that she got attached to a lot of outside companies and um, universities to basically go more in depth and understand more about the subject. So, actually, from her experience, it was actually very, very interesting and much more rewarding than just studying a H2 topic, which is purely theory. Because for H3, you have to go outside partake in the experiments and actually apply your knowledge yeah so how about like h3 math okay so for h3 math right actually it goes a lot more uh, in depth into like rigorous proofs like actually understanding like the concepts in, in detail itself because actually what you do for h2 is mostly applying like okay you could understand it on a not a pretty rather surface level like, and then just apply it onto the questions itself but for h3 they'll go more in depth into like maybe even uni undergraduate like le uh, level one module courses okay mm -hmm. so in that case right, i will i will say that if you are someone who actually likes reading math, like if you are someone who really likes to look at math textbooks and read them, then that might be the thing for you, to be honest. Okay. But one thing to know for history is that um for the reason why most people take history, right, other than to get greater exposure, right, and it's just to actually increase the odds of getting scholarships. Like. Mm -hmm. But that being said, right, okay, it's your first priority is to make sure that your H2s, right, you can secure the A's first. Okay. Because for personally, because I'm a scholar for NUS also as well, okay. So for me, I didn't take any H3, la, okay? So I probably just had just H2 A's, like straight A's, okay? So I still managed to get the scholarships, and quite a number of other people actually do still get scholarships without the H3's. La. So I'll say that H3 is just a very good uh, add-on if you're already certain that you're pretty much going to get your straight A's already, mm -hmm. okay? And it will come into play if you're trying to apply for more prestigious scholarships, like my point, like the PSA scholarships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, like, if you're trying to get into, like, the top universities in the world, I'll say it's not so much on the US side, but mainly on the UK side, especially when you're applying using the UCAS system. If you actually took H3 subjects um, for Oxford, Cambridge, your Golden Triangle universities like LSE, UCL, um, Imperial, I'll say that H3 does give you a significant boost. Because mm. at the end of the day, I'll say basically everyone who applies for the same course as you has that straight A's. Um, and the only thing that can really distinguish you apart from them is actually those H3 subjects that you take on top of um, your current grades. And at the same time, one more thing I'll, I think it's good to point out is um, the difference between um, H3s in general can be quite diverse. Uh. For example, for me when I was actually, because um, I was planning to take H3 geography, but then I, I, after a while I decided not to because I had too many CCA commitments when I was in JC about six years back. So it's just a thesis paper so for history geography is literally just a if i'm not wrong a 4000 word thesis paper which you have to spend a lot of time just writing and really <laughs> tweaking whereas for um other subjects for example like math physics like there's um yes you can be attached to a university yeah. or do a research program but at the end of the day a lot of students what they do is actually they have a additional subject in school so mm -hmm. after all their h2 papers are done they have h3 papers that they have to take mm -hmm. in december Mm, yeah, so see. it's quite diverse. It really depends on what kind of a H three program you want, whether it's internal within your school, whether it's attached to your university, whether it's a thesis paper. Mm, yeah. See. So having um, bridged into the topic about scholarships, so I guess like um, at the end of these two years, so a lot of students, a lot of our viewers will be very bright. Like I mean, you'll be able to get your very good stellar results. So now for our viewers who are trying to gun for a scholarship, so. I think something in mind is like a very good CCA record. Yeah. So um, probably you can share a little bit how do you juggle the time between <laughs> academic <laughs> activities versus like co-curricular activities? Well, um, I had four CCAs. Four CCAs? Um, <laughs> four. 
I did. He survived. I survived. <laughs> barely, yes. barely. Well, how did I do well? Uh? <laughs> and he uh, did very okay. well to get a scholarship to. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't get a scholarship. I didn't. I didn't apply. I didn't apply. He, he rejected. Uh? Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's not talk about it. Um, but um, I did floorball. So I did ADIFs for two years. Um, I did theater. I did a lot of plays for theater, dance, performance for schools. Um, then externally on the outside, I did frisbee. So frisbee, I think I won like four or five tournaments mm. and then also but uh, went for international competitions. Then last but not least is the one I actually spend the most time on. I did uh, amateur Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Wow. So I had to juggle all of that. I still remember like on a typical Wednesday it would be like two to five o'clock I would um, go for floorball and then like five to eight I'll go for theater and then like eight o'clock I rush out to the city because my um, my Muay Thai gym is in the city. Then I have to do Muay Thai from like <laughs> yeah nine fifteen to ten fifteen. So like a lot of people ask me how did I survive? But um I always say it's very simple. Number one, your subject combination is extremely, extremely important. There are easy subject combinations and there are hard ones. Like I always like to banter a bit like, like H1 math, uh, if you take a, if you have, if you have a, a math background, uh, it's not time consuming at all. Compared to H2 math, I always say that true, the true. difference is very, very big. And at the same time, for drama elective, um, I'll say that there isn't as much studying to do. It's more um, practical based. So I have a lot more time on my hands to actually juggle. So if Let's say I will take a more difficult subject for me. Let's just say um, I'm gonna do go with the arts one, uh, history, geography, econs, and then maybe study my contrasting like chem. Um, mm. Then no way I will have time to actually um, do all these CCAs. Mm. But I'll say at the end of the day, while CCA portfolio is important, but uh, if you don't even have the grades in the first place, then it won't really matter. Right. So you need to make sure you know how to juggle your time and don't try to. Um, do too much because uh, I regret doing so much even though yes I got to enjoy a lot of experiences but um, you need to really find a balance uh, and I would say for the first one year it might be difficult to strike the balance but you will slowly adjust to JC life and it will get better mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's an alternative view on that as well though, yeah actually so um, if let's say you don't do too well mm. you know touch wood correct. for A levels actually your CCA portfolio is something that can actually save you that's correct yeah so um, while I was in Huach I basically DSA Mm. Uh, track and field mm. um, but basically I didn't do track and field that wasn't my main sport mm. yeah basically what I did was I represented Singapore as a national athlete basically went to world championships for triathlon about twice uh, during my uh, JC period as well as for YOG qualifiers mm. yeah so a lot of my uh, classmates and my teammates who um, basically put a lot of heart and soul and time into track and field actually Sadly, they do, didn't do so well for their A-levels, mm. but during um, university interviews, the second round of interviews, because of their CCA commitments, actually that gave them the edge above other applicants and then they got the spot. Mm. Yeah, so mm. that's actually an alternate mm. view, but however, I do agree with Evan, do not rely purely on your CCA. Mm. Uh, first things first would be your grades. Yeah. But they are shifting towards more aptitude-based mm. admissions. Uh. True, like, I have friends who, like, if you were to consider their score, they wouldn't get into university, but because they're a national bowler, like, yeah. best in their age category, they're still admitted into mm. universities. Like, my friend just got into SMU, even mm. though he didn't do that well. Mm, yeah. I see. Yeah. So from talking about scholarships, now we move into applications for universities. And I guess something that's really interesting in our current education landscape is we have the introduction of liberal arts systems, for example, mm. N NUS and U yeah. College, yeah, correct. Yeah. So, which is uh, extremely rigorous as well, but it does involve a hybrid of different disciplines like science, math, and as well as our yeah. humanities. Yeah. So, now we have introduced a hybrid system to our JC syllabus, so uh, could we share, could you share a little bit more about what's this hybrid system? Mm. 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 Oh, this one, uh. Okay, actually, for me, I don't really have much first-hand experience about the hybrid system, but I do know a few people who actually took hybrid uh, courses like, back in the, in the my JC time, okay? So, it's actually what you usually have, let's say if you have a science stream, right, you'll take three science subjects and one contrasting, okay? For the hybrid, it'll be like a two-two, it's more balanced, yep, I okay? See. Uh, I can't comment about for them, maybe because of their interests, that's why they actually took that. But for me, uh, the reason why I stuck to science was because um, I wasn't a very arts oriented person, I prefer science, and I was pretty sure that my university choices, right, the causes I'll go for is 100% going to be science, yeah, yeah, really 100% going to be science, that's why I actually stick with what I have, but I say, suppose, let's say you really have interest in both areas and you want to explore, right, okay, you could opt for the hybrid, okay, because actually, right now, I think recently, the NUS also announced they're actually building this uh, 
new uh, course, right? That's uh, integrating both the humanities they, and the... It was on the news, yeah, mm-hmm. today. Literally. Oh, it's today. Oh, yeah, okay. launching like the multidisciplinary program. Yeah, yeah integrating yeah. the science and the humanities together, yeah, right? Correct. Yeah, so new faculty. That's yeah. something that's interesting. I think I think it's good, okay? Because in, in a sense, it's good to be... Uh, it's more holistic development, mm-hmm. okay? Because you are well-developed in both of your right and left brain areas of... of, of yeah. Eh? Mm, Both the left and right yes, brain. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, correct. I will actually add on by saying that while a lot of people take PCME, BCME, I think there's uh I think hybrid students especially are, are a bit different. Like it's more like they choose subjects which they love rather than the subjects they can open the most doors. And when I look at my own friends or even my students, a lot of them who are taking hybrid is they don't really have the end goal in terms of I want to enter this course or I, I, I want to have as many doors open as possible. But it's more of I just want to study what I love and I'm best at. And I feel like these students actually they do the very very well because they don't force themselves into taking a subject that can open doors but they don't really enjoy or mm. not really are competent at mm. so um i feel like not all schools offer hybrid combinations in fact mm. um most schools actually restrict you in terms of you need a yes. big combinations right, right. right. Uh, but some schools are actually um allows you to do any given combination you want for example acjc you can pick literally anything mm. yeah mm. i see i see so um since like it's, it's a good choice for our students, for our viewers. So since like uh, and if NUS is pushing towards it, so this is something which you can consider. But having said that, uh, you must be very passionate about what you do and with the end goal in mind to get into a good course mm-hmm. as well as a good career later. And uh, having said that, we are going to bridge into the next concept. So how about the other end of the spectrum? We have students who did very well when we talk about their scholarships and to university applications and stuff. So uh, we are going to talk also about probably at, for our set force, you know, some of them who didn't do really well and they are restricted by their colleges from taking 4H2s. So uh, what do you have as advice for them? So like in terms of, let's say, subject combinations, uh, 3H2, 1H1, uh, what's the contrasting subject to take and what have you picked up from students who had such courses? and to share with our viewers. Mm. Hmm. That's a very, very interesting question. But I think we discussed this with a lot of our own students, right? Uh, like me and Evan, basically what we do is we sit down and we kind of like plan with them as well, like what's good, what's bad, and whether they should drop this or that subject, yeah. But um, basically talking with the students, I think me and Evan, and me as well, right? Yeah. We can basically come to the conclusion that uh, <laughs> The best topic to go and basically take for H one is gonna be it's gonna be math. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be math. I, I still remember like like um I have some students like they come to me because their siblings were under me. They come to me and like even before they even start like the J one year they do like some planning with me because like I said before subject combination is possibly one of the most important determinants of how well you do at the end like, whether it's really something that you're good at or you're just taking it because you want to open doors and like one thing I always like to do is say if you want to have an easy time and if you did well for A math uh, then just take H1 math in, and then like normally people like to take H1 econs and H2 math but if you switch it around yes H2 math have a, has a high distinction rate but by taking H1 math you free up a lot of time which you can use for other subjects so I have I literally have people coming up to me Thanking me, uh, not for teaching them econs, uh, but for thanking, <laughs> thanking me because I told them to take H1 math. And they're like, wow, Evan, you, you literally saved my life. If I didn't do that, uh, I, I can imagine spending so much time doing H2 math. I see all my friends suffering. But yeah. meanwhile, me, I start like uh, a month before. Like, even though I, because h one generally people don't put in as much effort. Like, let's be <laughs> honest. But like, it's still very manageable. Because especially the first year is like mainly A math topics, right? Yes. Then mm. the new topics are actually considerable considerably easier, easier than the yeah. it's not that bad yeah, 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 it's not that bad, bad. yeah, yeah. Okay, at this point I must give disclaimer. Also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so so this is all considering given that uh okay, firstly is you the other three H two that you choose, right, you are quite confident in getting an A already. Mm-hmm. So maybe the H one map you can just take it and get a free A lah. Yeah. Uh, assuming that you already got a good A map background. Okay, that's one thing to think of. And then next second disclaimer is that uh please uh Go ahead and look through your new courses first and make sure that whatever you are actually interested in doesn't require H2 math as a prerequisite before you actually choose H1 math. We, we do know that uh, math is one of the most popular choices. Mm. So because like uh, both art streams and science streams do offer that as one of the subject combination. Mm. Uh, one of the questions submitted is uh, if I was to choose between art stream versus science stream, which stream, which course 
allows me to have more university choices <laughs> or options. I, I don't think arts opens any doors at all. Ouch. It's just that <laughs> it, it sets the foundation. I mean, like for example, I took econs in JC, and then when I went into uni, when I had to do my econs modules, it was a piece of cake. Um, to the point where I didn't even go at the lecture slides, I could also do a lot of the questions. So it found the it, it, it basically forms the basis of your university mm -hmm. um, degree. But mm -hmm. um, the thing is, at the end of the day, I would say a lot of students don't really pursue mm -hmm. arts courses that they already previously took out. Like, um, just because you took geography in JC doesn't really mean you will do it in university. Yeah. So like, mm -hmm. if you really don't know what you want mm -hmm. right now, and I feel like that's perfectly not normal to not know what you want yet, um, the best thing to do is obviously to is to open as many doors as possible. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like if I have one piece of advice, it's really just make sure you choose the subjects that you love rather than doing subjects that you hate but might open doors because mm -hmm. um, it will really make your entire two years in JC very, very difficult. Mm, I see. So I guess there are pros and cons in uh, choosing whether the art stream or science stream but if you really want the best of both worlds so probably the hybrid course is something Correct. which you might yeah. really want to consider. So thank you so much Evan, Sean and Mings for such a fruitful and informative discussion and I hope our viewers have benefited greatly as well. So for more details, do drop us a text or WhatsApp and stay tuned for updates on some of the seminars which we'll be having to address some of the concerns you have closer to the dates of JE release and all the best for your O-level results. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.